40. 40. Oh. 40. It's the big 40. Oh. Over the hill for Cannondale. 40 years old. 40 years of innovation. 40 years of setting the standard. Of changing perceptions. Of progression. 40 years bending all the rules and creating new opportunities for cyclists. Staying one step ahead. Yonju. Karant. 40 Jahre. 40 years. Of simple. Yet profound innovation. Of passion. 40 years. Of creative change. 40 years. 40 years of creating the perfect. The perfect, the perfect, the perfect ride. This is what we've been up to all these years, just in case you forgot or you didn't know. It all began right here in 1971. We started Cannondale in a loft above a pickle factory across from the Cannondale train station. 1971, it was a great year. Cannondale was born and so was I. We started making innovative camping and cycling accessories. Camping packs and bags. Banyers. The first really commercially successful bicycle trailer, the Bugger. June 1983. Cannondale ships its first ever bicycle, the ST500. When we introduced aluminum, the cycling industry laughed, but who's laughing now? It was cool looking bikes and uh, everybody was excited and it was great to finally get to the final product, something we could ship. When we came out with the oversized TIG welded frames, it shocked the world. Lightweight, efficient, stiff, and at a reasonable price. The ear of aluminum was underway. <laughs> You think learning to ride a bike is harder than making one? Watch this. Well, the Bedford Pride, I mean, just look around. I believe probably 90% of the people that's in the building today has been 10 plus years with the company. I think this plant's played an important role over the years of building this company, working with all the different organizations throughout the company to bring great innovative products to our customers and the people that we have as an asset to the company. I mean, they're our greatest asset. Should I go out and buy a $3,000 bike with a fat aluminum frame that I can't even ride on the road? Because it's the best in the world. Canada's stream of innovation has really been driven by our ability to test and prove out new products and ideas. From the very beginning, QLab and ESAL, right here in Bedford, Pennsylvania, have always been the state of the art in bicycle testing. Examining not only our frames and components, but every single part of the bike to make sure that it meets our expectations in testing. In 1989, we opened up Cannondale Europe. Cannondale was popular because it, the whole mountain bike boom was coming from the U.S. and it was a U.S. handmade product. And it was definitely coming from the source and it was you know, as a high-end quality product which didn't really exist. In 1991, Cannondale introduced our first suspension mountain bike, the EST, Elevated Suspension Technology. Ironically, from today's perspective, it had rear suspension only, though it did have a flex stem. I can remember the first time I saw it in the hallway after it had been rolled out of R&D. It was an amazing machine, something we'd never seen before. It definitely changed the way we looked at cycling. 1992, Cannondale continued to expand. Cannondale Japan was open. In 1992, Cannondale revolutionized front suspension with our head shock. Head shock, the revolutionary in-head tube needle bearing suspension fork. The patented needle bearing technology that was found in that 1992 head shock is still in use today in our greatly updated lefty and head shock forks. Well, here's the future of bikes. I love this bike. This is great. This is okay. Cannondale. In 1993, we introduced the Cannondale Super V, the most widely imitated full suspension mountain bike ever. This is probably one of the greatest ever made, greatest, greatest, greatest ever made. To be a bike geek is what it's all about. And if I'm a geek, that's what I want to be. <laughs> In 1994, the most successful mountain bike team was launched. In eight years, Volvo Cannondale won, and we won a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for tonight's top ten list. May I have the blue card, please? One of my bags didn't make it. It happened to be like my dog and my fish, like all my pets. What do you mean? Your, your, your dog is in a bag? <laughs> <laughs> He's cremated. <laughs> what? What? Hold it, hold it, back up. Also in 1994, the Coda Magic Crank Set was introduced. Our Coda 701 Crank is a unique patented CNC design. 
These hollow ultra stiff arms with external bearings really pioneered the standard that's now used by Shimano, FSA, and SRAM. No problem guys, you're welcome. 1995, the 2.8 Silk Road, the first suspension road bike featuring the Headshock SR4. In 1995, Cannondale introduced its first compact road bike designed for smaller riders and for women. 1995, Cannondale formed a subsidiary in Australia. We had a huge impact in the market. Uh, we set the standards. All the other companies were shaking. They had to follow our lead. We had the best product. We had the best terms and conditions. Cannondale, the future of cycling. This is the new 1996 Cannondale Super V DH Active. 1996, the Super V DH downhill specific dual suspension bike. Featuring the Moto 120 inverted dual crown fork. Very strong, super, super safe, and takes you to speeds you've never seen before. The Super V DH was named best downhill mountain bike ever by Mountain Bike Action. 1997 was a huge year for Cannondale. Huge. Ginormous. Gion. Huge. OK. In 1997, we introduced the first virtual pivot bike, which was a team issued downhill Fulcrum DH bike. We introduced the Raven full suspension bike. Also in 1997, Cannondale became the first US manufacturer to sponsor a European pro team. We supplied bikes to the Seiko Pro Road Cycling Team. This was a very good move. In the first year, Seiko won the Giro. Super Mario Cipollini won two stages and spent four days in the yellow jersey at the Tour de France. The best bike in Canada. Yeah. Uh, I was sitting on the tailgate of one of our team trucks at Mount Snow, and I caught a look at this guy coming down the mountain. I knew his name was Aaron Chase. I'd been introduced to him earlier in the day. He was finding paths down the mountain that no one else could see. So in 1997, when I had the opportunity, he was one of the first athletes that I signed to the Sobe Cannondale team. 1999, the CAD 5 was the first cross-country bike specifically designed for use with disc brakes. 2000, Canada shocks the world again by launching Canada Motorsports. Canada Motors were so advanced that they won Bike of the Year and the World Four Stroke Quad Championship. Also in 2000, we introduced the single-sided lefty suspension fork. Yeah, the industry laughed at us again. But the lefty is lighter, stronger, Stiffer and smoother than anything else on the planet. When the lefty came out, I, I, I really thought, oh man, these guys, they are kind of crazy. And I love them for that. Eleven years after its introduction, the lefty's still turning heads. Who's laughing now? Also, in 2000, we launched the hologram SI crank and bottom bracket at the Tour de France, which is now known as BB30. Hands down, this has been the lightest, stiffest crank set on the market for the last ten years and still is. You know, here at Cannondale, we're such nice guys that we actually gave the BB30 standard to the entire industry just to level the playing field. You're welcome. In 2002, we introduced the Scalpel, the world's lightest dual suspension design. The Scalpel went on to become the winningest dual suspension bike in World Cup history. In 2003, Simone wins Cannondale's second Giro aboard his CAD 7. Also in 2003, the innovative carbon and aluminum 613 road bike was launched and promptly wins the stage in the Tour de France. The 613 was so light that our mechanics were forced to add weight to the bike in order to reach the ECI minimum of 6.8 kilos or 14.96 pounds. That led to the infamous Legalize My Cannondale campaign. Needless to say, the UCI didn't think that was very funny. Dear Sir, we recently saw in the Giro d'Italia race the Saeco team with special Legalize My Cannondale jerseys. To say the least, that was bad taste. It is not only bad taste, but ethically unacceptable. Those types of action will not change our rules. Sincerely yours, Hein Verbruggen. Also, in 2003 we dominated the freeride world. Cedric Gracia took home the win at the Red Bull Rampage, and I even won the Red Bull Bike Cup. 2004, Damiano Cunigo won the Giro d'Italia on his CAD 8 road trip. 2005, Ferris El Sultan wins Cannondale's first Ironman World Championship on his Cannondale Slice. Also, in 2005, 40,000 people showed up to watch me, Aaron Chase, win the Red Bull District Ride in Nuremberg, Germany. In 2006, Cannondale launched his first full carbon road bike, the Synapse. 2006, we launched the Cut. Seven of the most progressive freeride and gravity athletes. All with one goal, to shred everything in sight. 2007, Cannondale partners up with Liquigas Pro Cycling Team and we win our fourth Giro. 
Also in 2007, we developed the OnBike, a revolution in urban mobility. Single-sided front and rear with a fully enclosed structural chain case. Also, 2007, I won the U.S. National Cyclocross Championships wearing the crazy nine-ball kit. 2008, we started collaboration with Bosch, developed our own e-bike, and to this day, competition is still trying to catch up. Cannondale releases a pair of legendary carbon bikes, the Super 6 and the Slice. In 2009, Cannondale launches the Flash. The lightest, stiffest, smoothest mountain bike hardtail ever. The complete Flash Carbon only weighs 16.6 .6 pounds or 7.54 kilos. This is the first hardtail frame ever tested to break the 100 Newton meter per degree stiffness to weight barrier. And it's very comfortable. 2009 was a good year. I won the Mega Avalanche Peru and the Continental Downhill title back to back weekends. Chrissy Wellington wins the Kona Ironman World Championships aboard her Slice High Mod Aero Bike, setting a new course record at the same time. Italian cyclocross star Marco Aurelio Fontana wins his national championship. In that same year, Tim Johnson wins the U.S. national championship, both on their cyclocross CAD 9s. 2010, Ivan Bassa wins our fifth Giro d'Italia. In the fall, Vincenzo Nibali brought us our first Vuelta win, bringing home the red jersey. So that's two out of three Grand Tours in 2010. And guess what? 2011, we're going after yellow. Marinda Carfrey wins Cannondale's second consecutive Women's Ironman Championship. 2010, our bike line is bursting with innovation. We introduced the Overmountain family of bikes. Claymore, Jekyll, and the Scarlet. They morph from a snappy short travel bike to a long travel machine at the flick of a switch. The all-new Scalpel, the lightest, stiffest, fastest full suspension bike on the planet. The most advanced cyclocross bike ever, the Full Carbon Super X. The Catan is stiffer and lighter than most carbon fiber frames on the market. That proves that Kendall still owns aluminum technology. 2010, I won Mega Avalanche in Halbjörn. 2010, I won the Master of World Championship. In 2011, I'm not planning on slowing down. 2011, the Liquid Gas Cannondale team was launched. So they laughed at us a bit over the years. So what? So what? So what? Who cares? So what? One of the things about working for Cannondale is that we really live and breathe innovation. We're not scared of doing things differently, and we do what we believe is right to make a better product for you to ride. After four decades of cycling passion and innovation, we're still at it. We're still at it. We're still at it. Things like BB30, oversized aluminum, lefty, these products were cutting edge when they came out, and they're still cutting edge. We never settle. We will never rest. We are on a quest to create the perfect ride. And just wait, just wait, just wait to see what 2012 brings. <laughs>